Hi, and welcome to the Crash Course in Passover, the holiday in which we celebrate the birthday of the Jewish people as we achieved our national freedom from the land of Egypt. But what many people don't realize, it actually took 500 years to get there. The formation of the Jewish nation took five centuries in total. It can be divided into two distinct stages. Stage one is the era of the patriarchs and the matriarchs. It's a 290 year period and it covers the remarkable lives of the family that founded the Jewish nation. Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebecca, Jacob who marries Rachel and Leah. Just consider who these individuals were. They were gigantic intellects with Abraham discovering on his own the rationale for the existence of one God. There were courageous revolutionaries who tried to demonstrate to the world that it wasn't about idols being made in the image of man, but that it was man who was made in the image of God. There were outstanding leaders who earned the respect of world leaders. They were spiritual giants. All seven of them achieved a level of prophecy with God. And they were faithful servants willing to go on a journey to build a nation committed to God and live in a very holy land. But the challenge is how do you translate great individuals into a great nation? It's not enough for a group of people to be inspired by their founding fathers and mothers. Inspiration can barely survive the ups and downs of day-to-day -day living, let alone will to help them face the enormous struggles and upheavals they must survive as they traverse the course of history. The nation itself needed to be forged through their own experience to test their mettle and commitments. Just think about the type of nation God was trying to create. They needed to be willing to enter a covenant with God sight unseen and accept whatever commandments and responsibilities he asked of them. They needed to attempt to be a moral light unto nations that were bigger, stronger, and seemingly more influential. And they needed to live in a hostile world that for the next 1300 years wouldn't even begin to understand the concept of one God and who would often see them as strange, backward, and threatening. And most importantly, they were never to give up on the dream to help the world achieve universal peace, brotherly love, and the awareness that we are all children of a loving, caring God, the King of the universe. To achieve this, God needed the nation to go through an experience that would enable them to know in their bones that God exists, that He controls the universe, and that nothing stands in His way. To feel His love and care for them as descendants of the patriarchs and the matriarchs. To have trust that the darker periods and struggles are part of the process of growth and eventual redemption. And ultimately, be grateful to be part of this nation and to do everything humanly possible to pass on the sense of privilege and responsibility to their children and the next generation. Enter phase two of national formation, the 210 years in the land of Egypt. The land of Egypt was the womb and birthplace of the Jewish people. 94 years of a gradual assimilation into Egyptian culture and then 116 years spent in slavery. Just imagine what it was like to be back then living in the most powerful civilization of the time that was also the most spiritually impure. Egypt was filled with black magic and idolatry. We had been reduced for generations to slavery because the Egyptians had become suspicious of our loyalties. And it was ruled by a pharaoh that was absolutely committed to destroy our future as he decreed to drown all newborn male children. But somehow the Jewish people maintained an ember of hope. Despite the most brutal oppression and killings, the descendants of Abraham and Sarah, especially the women, were committed to having children. The killings continued and the cries grew louder, but the Jewish people were committed to life. God heard their cries, and then, for the first time in human history, He lifted the veil off the natural world, and He revealed His awesome power, control, and awareness, and ultimately He made a mockery of the most powerful man that walked the planet. Using the ten plagues, God demonstrated over the course of a year that He controlled every facet of reality and He could change the very nature of nature. The first three plagues, blood, frogs, and lice, demonstrated God's existence and His absolute control of everything below, the water, creatures from the water, and the dust. The next three plagues, wild animals, pestilence, and boils, showed that God had absolute authority over everything that walked the land, both animals and man. And with the final set of three plagues, hail, locusts, and darkness, God demonstrated that He had absolute control over nature, even something as fundamental as day and night. It was the tenth plague, though, that was the ultimate act of measure for measure. When the civilization that enslaved us and tried to rob us of our future saw at the stroke of midnight the destruction of their own future with the death of their firstborn. 
The children of Israel took their first steps across the border and experienced national freedom amidst the power, majesty, and the love of God. And that's why every year Jews around the world try to capture that experience and transmit it as the foundation of our national identity and purpose to our children, our future. That's why the Seder we use a Haggadah, which guides our retelling of the story and directs us to share the experience as if we had been there ourselves. We acknowledge our roots as idol worshippers and slaves and the transformation to a free nation under one God. We lift four glasses of wine to mark the different stages of redemption and drink while reclining to connect to the noble spirit of being God's people. We relive the pain and the anguish of the bitter herb and eat the mutts of the bread of our affliction. And we also recall the Passover offering that we would have celebrated with if we had the Holy Temple of Jerusalem. But most importantly, we do whatever we can to encourage our children to ask questions, to be curious and aware, and hopefully they'll walk away with an understanding why this night is truly different from any other night in history, and that's because it produced a nation that is truly different from any other. Before we conclude the crash course, it's important to remember that the more you put into the Seder, the more you get out of the Seder. I encourage everybody, read the first part of the book of Exodus. Go from chapter 1 all the way through most of chapter 15. That'll take you right through the events of the splitting of the Red Sea. May this year's Seder increase our sense of gratitude for being part of such a remarkable nation. And may it strengthen our commitment to work together to be a light unto nations and achieve the dream. Have a very happy Passover and please God, next year in Jerusalem.